as we were prepping for this interview, I actually had to Google YouTube videos of recaps of season two to refresh my memory to make sure that like, because I thought we were only sticking to season two. So I was like, hey, I to make sure I don't say anything from season three or <laughs> in season one. So I, so Paul, if you don't remember, here's the like general I, I, recap. I, I, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> By the way, this is like the perfect example of like, their two actor processes. Like Nina would have a binder full of notes and like and like maps and charts for everything she's supposed to do. And Paul would be in the hair and makeup room before at call being like, what are we shooting today? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so don't get me wrong, I'm still a consummate professional. But yeah, I'm a little bit more. No, but it's funny because I I do need that recap, Nina. But for me, from like a speaking of like actors' processes, like from like a narcissistic actor perspective when you say like do you remember season two for me i look at it like what did i look at like there's bc and and ad before christ and after death for me it's before ripper it's br and ar after Ah. ripper so i all i know is that like season two i was still a good guy and then towards the end i started getting so that for me that's the only like gauge i have of time (laughs) exactly (laughs) so nina what does happen in season two what's the yeah um so tyler lockwood's cousin or brother what was he brother cousin (gasps) mason lockwood yeah mason taylor great (laughs) great looking guy (laughs) taylor (laughs) kinney (laughs) arrived full curse okay yes it's all very blurry. I, I, <laughs> I remember like at the time we were shooting it being confused and being like trying to stay <laughs> on track. <laughs> it sounds for me like I remember when the season that the originals got introduced was one of my favorite seasons. Mm-hmm. That's I do mm-hmm. remember that. So this must be it. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny like hearing all this. Like it's I don't know. I, I, it's all in the back of my brain, like in my subconscious. <laughs> and now hearing all of this, like the, the switch over time, Brittany reading off camera, this, and then you with the binders. Like I have vivid memories of all of this that I haven't actually thought about in 10 years. You know, I'm going down this like visceral memory, <laughs> and, like imagining everything. It's so wild. I'm just going to continue mm-hmm. listening. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do. I told Julie before we started, um, we have to touch on Masquerade because A, it's one of the best episodes of the series. But for you two, it was also that was the like Catherine Damon Stefan fight scene, which like I feel like you probably remember shooting. Mm-hmm. I was I in, I wasn't in that, was I? Yeah, you yeah, were you in that were. too. It like, was the two brothers against Catherine. Uh, yeah, it was like a, a no, it was like the Lockwood Mansion. The okay. Lockwood Mansion, like tea room, but we built it. Oh, um, okay. I don't, I don't know why I don't remember this scene. We didn't yeah, watch I, the sun come up. We we yeah. left work and drove home when the sun was coming. Up. <laughs> right, and then tried <laughs> desperately it was dark inside, to fall asleep in at nine a.m. Yeah, it's so. <laughs> I I really believe, like firmly in my heart, that shows would be so much better in terms of just like longevity, actor happiness, quality, everything. Not that Vampire season one and two were amazing quality, but I do think we got burnt out. I think everyone should shoot like three weeks on and then one week off. I think it would be the solution to everything. Um, I agree. Especially in 22 a year, you know? I I just, yeah. Anyway, it has nothing to do with this podcast. It's just just a lot of episodes. 22 episodes is a lot to shoot a lot to write a lot. It's just crazy. Yeah. Yeah, We were, I remember that day too, Julie, that was like one, that was kind of one of my breaking points of exhaustion was that specific episode. There was so much Catherine and those, all those night shoots. And and I I think I was like 22 years old at the time. Yeah. You were very young. and, And still then was like so exhausted to the core of my being. I don't think I could do that now at 32. Right. Wow, yeah, 32. Right. So old. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. So old. But the, the, it's just two, and it is because of Catherine, has what I consider maybe the most, one of the most heartbreaking breakup scenes in the history of the Vampire Diaries when oh. Jenna stabs herself and Stefan and Elena break up. And Paul, you like destroyed me. I'm scared to ask about this. You're a meme. That's a meme. Your cry face you is are a meme. meme. I know it's not as bad as James Vanderbeek's. Oh, no. 
<laughs> I, I love that scene. scene. Uh, the note, the person who was directing that was um, Baring. Um, yeah. John Baring. And I just remember, um, you know, I, I, he's, he's, a, he's a director um, who likes to do lots of takes, like lots. <laughs> Like, like, like some, sometimes like 10, 12, you know, 14, which is very unheard of in television, frankly, network television, there's a schedule and you don't really do that many takes. I don't know if we did that many, but I remember doing like at least four that were like pretty good, you know, but I also like, you know, um, you know, was dealing with a couple things in my personal life. So I was kind of like, didn't really want to go to dark places because I was like trying to keep my head above water uh, mm -hmm. in, in real life, frankly. Um, and so Baring kept pushing me. Maybe I don't, sorry, I certainly didn't confide in him, but uh, maybe he sensed I was going through something. And so he really wanted that on screen. And I remember just getting a little bit angry at him, uh, even though it was his job. Sure. And that I, I would do the same as a director. And that's what you're supposed to do. That's when you're creating a film or television. The whole point of it is to be honest and pure. Otherwise, what the hell is the point? I was still a young actor and I kind of was still like sort of guarding my feelings. And I just remember being like, all right, uh, F it. I'm not going to curse. I feel like this is PG. F it. I'll do it. I'll just go. I'll go to my personal place. Did it. <laughs> so that that crying and all that kind of that whole breakup was, um, you know, my own dealing with my own stuff, essentially on screen exploited, which is what acting is. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and then, you know, uh, I remember after we shot it, I was like eh, a little relieved, but then also a little bit angry that he, that we like, that I had to deal with that. And then I had to go home and deal with that. But at the end of the day, it's on screen. It works so great for the role, for the, uh, the scene. And I would do it again in a heartbeat because, you know, that's what that's what all the great actors do. So, hey, Greggy, no, um, that's my dog. Um, he doesn't want he doesn't want me to go to the dark place. <laughs> worried about me. Oh, that's such a good. I feel like wait, Paul. Now that we have you, because this was a question I had for Julie and Kevin in season one of. <laughs> this was my favorite answer to this because at the end of the pilot when Stefan comes to like Elena's front door to check on her and then she invites him in, like it's the very end of the pilot. You're like on the verge of tears. So of course I'm talking to Julie and Kevin and I'm like, it was such an amazing choice from Paul. And they're like, we're pretty sure it was so cold. His eyes were watering. <laughs> so do you remember? Um, it's like vague memory of you being like, I can't, bro, I can't get my eyes to stop watering. <laughs> yeah, so to answer your question, I don't know if those were, that was tears or me just, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I will, I will continue thinking it was a fantastic Paul acting. Thank you. I'd prefer you think that. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. I feel really. like that happened a lot with, with Paul, like suggesting people and them getting on the show. And I remember being so deeply offended because I was like, oh, I want to suggest some people. And then I would like suggest people, but. No one would ever get cast. So. You know, you know who else? <laughs> Either you, know you guys didn't care about my opinion, or my friends weren't talented. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> sure which one it is. I finally got my my moment, though. It took me eight years, but um, one day, remember, I suggested the song. I like sent you a <gasps> song, truly. Yes, <laughs> this is the best. <laughs> you the she, we were driving home. Yeah. Yeah, in the finale of Vampire Diaries, the final, final episode, um, there was this song. I don't know why. I, I just like connected to it and I sent it to, to Julie and I was like, I don't know. I, I like this. I don't know if it'll fit or whatever, but just putting it on your radar. It hadn't even come out yet. It was like a friend's demo, uh, chords demo. It's called Hold On. And I don't even think you, you, think you sort of, I don't know if you listened to it, but you just forwarded the email to the sound guy right or the music yeah. composer Basically, I, I towards the one that put all the work in but i remember yeah. feeling like like very proud that it something made <laughs> made the episode at some point <laughs> even though it was stupid and small and whatever but yeah so no, I, I i don't mean to make this all about exhaustion but the show was very important to 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 me and to nina and to ian because it was such a success and we all loved it and believed in it but i just remember being just done. I was dying. I was just like, I want this season to end because I'm putting so much into this, you know? And I just was tired. I was just tired. I just remember shooting and just being 
tired. That's all I remember. <laughs> I know that sounds so boring. Do you remember, Nina? Like, that was, it was a, yeah. yeah, especially by the time you get to the end of any season. Yeah. I think we all felt the same way at the end of every season. Thank God. I and then you have to learn again. your Thank lines. God we did this when we were, yeah. You, and then once you get home, you were right, Paul. We have to like break down the scenes and work on everything. So that's another couple of hours. It's so funny in quarantine, I feel like a lot of people revisited or discovered yeah. the show yeah. for the yeah. first time. Big time, big time. I, I found that like I'm getting recognized more with a mask and sunglasses on than ever before with no <laughs> mask or sunglasses on. It's from the masquerade. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. <laughs> because like people have been, have been binging it all over again. And people who didn't have time before because life was too busy have, have good have been finding peace or or distraction in our yeah. show and so yeah. it's been it's 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 breathing a new life i feel like i know not not to be like cheesy about it but i totally second that like there was a moment where in the beginning uh, i was getting recognized a lot and then it kind of like oh, okay it subsided a little and i was like okay cool and then suddenly like in the last like year it's like crazy everyone has watched the show um, and I'm like, what's going on? There must be a resurgence, but it's exactly, yeah, it's exactly that. People are discovering the show again. It's crazy. You know, there was an article that came out. It was the 15th most streamed show on Netflix in 2020, mm -hmm. which is really, yeah, which is, crazy. That. um, and the show premiered what, 10 years ago, or, you know what yeah. I mean? So that's pretty, pretty major. Longer. What's that? <laughs> 12 years ago. 12 years ago. Shit. <laughs> God, Really? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Nine. Oh my uh, god! Wow, it's a long time. I you know. guys, oh my god, Nina on the in Vancouver on the pilot sneaking off to go snowboarding when she was <laughs> supposed to. <laughs> I remember, and, that. I, I'm re <laughs> and I'm remembering like you guys in the season three and the reckoning getting to a huge fight on set because you were some, you'd reached your like breaking point of exhaustion oh, I remember like that too. with each other mm -hmm. and like and I got calls from both of you I was in LA and, <laughs> and I didn't, one of you was like you're probably gonna hear from the other but like I just need to tell you that like that I just I'm this is the last straw <laughs> just, <laughs> and then like and then years later you're like best friends hanging out all the time traveling together like it's just mm -hmm. such a great arc <laughs> for her 21st birthday she just got completely hooked up in vegas and we had a whole vegas weekend for nina's birthday <laughs> that's where <laughs> nina insane. nina that's where our epic hair photo is where oh that's right in the, suite. That was in the suite <laughs> <laughs> that was especially wild because we like we shot what, what we mentioned at the beginning of the episode of this episode. We got on a plane. A pretty, I'm pretty sure most of us didn't sleep Saturday night either. Sunday morning, we all got on a plane with either zero or two hours of sleep. Landed in, in back in Atlanta that night, and then had to be on set at 5 a.m. on Monday morning. Oh, oh God! God. <laughs> Again, the only things you can do when you're 21. <laughs> I don't right. think we would have survived otherwise. I don't couple, know. <laughs> I feel like I've been to a couple Super Bowls with you, Nina. I don't yeah. Know. I feel like, yeah. Probably. I really liked football for a minute. <laughs> 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 oh, oh.